Is it all right for Christians to participate in Halloween? Is it all right for our children to go trick-or-treating? Is it all right for us to give candy out to little children when they come to our doors if they're dressed like Batman and Robin and Superman and Cinderella? Is it all right when little kids come to our door trick-or-treating if we pretend like we're not home? Is that all right? See, that one is easier to answer than the others, isn't it? May I just say yes? Yes, it's okay to trick-or-treat. Yes, it's okay to give candy to trick-or-treaters. Yes, it's okay to use this as an opportunity for fun, family, entertainment. But anything is wrong, right? That would encourage us to worship Satan. Anything is wrong that would encourage us to move more towards the dark side. Anything is wrong that would encourage us to glorify demons and bad things like that. Anything that would encourage us to to follow the devil more than we're encouraged by Scripture to follow God. We've got to stay away from all of those things. But if for you and your children, your family, if for you Halloween is nothing more than just a good time to, to dress up, to get candy, to give out candy, again, nothing in Scripture wrong with that. Now, there may come a time when our influence is so harmed by participating in Halloween that we may have to give that another look. But right here, right now, in all probability, if your child goes trick-or-treating, nobody's going to think that they're going to start serving the devil tomorrow. If you give out candy, in all probability, nobody's going to think, well, you're voting for Satan and sin and you're anti-God. Nobody's going to think that. And by the way, by the way, when we broaden out to all people everywhere, somebody somewhere is going to think that everything is wrong or something is wrong. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible to find everybody who agrees with everything that we're going to do. Thankfully, that's not the test. That's not the test. What has God said? What does God say? That's the test. That's the test. And it is true that we never need to violate our conscience. So if it violates our conscience, if we can't do it in faith, we don't need to do it. If, if it is going to harm our influence with people that we need to lead to Christ, we need to, as best we can, take another path. But this idea that, well, there's somebody somewhere that says this is wrong, that's not the test. That's not the test. Okay, the test is, what does God say? What does God say? Okay. Now, if you have questions, thoughts, comments, I'm pretty easy to find around here. Halloween's not here yet, and we can, we can study these things more, more in-depthly as, as time permits. One of the issues that, that some folks that are concerned about Halloween would have, they say, well, if you allow your child to go trick or treating, you're teaching them to extort people, to bribe people in order to get something. May I confess to you, and this will not surprise you, with my W.S. Neal education of East Bruton back in the day, I didn't understand that I went, when I went to the door with my little cousins that I was actually threatening people. Give me candy or else... I didn't know that that's what we were really doing. I thought, and this is, this, is, this is reality now, I thought when we went up to the door and we yelled, trick or treat, I thought it was one word. I didn't know it was trick or treat. It's just a few years ago I figured out it's trick or treat, not trick or treat. And I would guess that just about every five-year-old that goes trick or treating thinks it's trick or treat, one word. Not trick or treat. 
Now, again, if, if your, your child, by participating in, in Halloween, they're learning to, well, if these people don't give me chocolate, if these people give me broccoli, I'm going to roll their house. Well, maybe that's all right. But if these people don't give me what I want, then I'm going to punish them. I'm going to penalize them. I'm going to pay them back for that. Then, of course, trick or treating would be a bad thing. But we're not doing that in order to teach our children those kind of things. We're just out there in the community trying to have a good time. And on Halloween evening, you're all invited to come to Judy's house, and she'll have surprise rolls for the adults and good candy for the kids. And y'all come by and camp out there with us for a while. Come on in. Again, please don't wear anything scary because I don't want to be up all night afraid to go to sleep. But you're welcome to come to our house and and trick-or-treat and have a good time. Bring your children, your grandchildren, your neighbor's children, and we, we would love to, love to enjoy that time with you. The world, as you know, is filled with a lot of people trying to trick us. You, do you get these, these emails about how Bill Gates and other people want to give you money or there's somebody in Nigeria? Let me just ask for a show of hands. Who has never received now, if, if you're not an email person, don't raise your hand. You don't apply in this situation. Not, not, nothing perfect. Who has never received a message from somebody in Nigeria wanting to give you money? Would you raise your hand? Sonny, you've never gotten Jody? Well, I'm going to give them your email address because you guys are missing out. Let me give you a sample then of some of the, some of the, the messages, mail that I get. This is, okay, guys. My lawyers, paralegals, sent this one to me, and if it doesn't work, they're aware that we all will be coming to visit them for a lawsuit for false advertisement. This took two pages of the Tuesday USA Today. It is for real. So we're all about to get rich, according to this. To all my friends, I do not usually forward messages. If you get a message that says, I do not usually forward messages that has been forwarded to you, you probably need to learn where that delete button is anyhow. This is from my friend, and I give a name, and who is she is really an attorney. That makes it true. No offense. If she says this will work, it will work. After all, what have you got to lose? You've got your time to lose. You've got your good sense to lose. You've got your money to lose. Any email you ever say, what have you got to lose? A lot that you cannot afford. Sorry, everybody. Just had to take the chance. I'm an attorney. I'm an attorney, and I know the law. This thing is for real. Rest assured, AOL and Intel will follow through with their promises for fear of facing a multi-million dollar class action suit similar to the one filed by PepsiCo against General Electric not too long ago. All right. Goes on to say, don't take this for a junk letter. Bill Gates is sharing his fortune. If you ignore this, you will repent later. Sound like a sermon, doesn't it? And goes on and on to talk about things like that and says, For every person you forward this email to, Microsoft will pay you two hundred and forty five dollars. For every person that sent for every person that you that you sent it to that forwards it on, Microsoft will pay you two hundred and forty three dollars. For every third person that receives it, you'll be paid two hundred and forty one dollars within two weeks. Microsoft will contact you for your address and send you a check. Regards, and then it has the person, their contact information. And then somebody else, thought this was a scam myself, but two weeks after receiving this email and forwarded on, Microsoft contacted me for my address, and within days I received a check for $24,800. That's a trick. It's not a treat. Trick or treat? Trick. And again, I, I won't take your, your, your good, valuable time, but we get these emails from these supposed folks in Nigeria that just come into 10 Brazilian dollars, and they want you to open an account because they want to send you some of it, and, and uh, they're, they're just so good and want to bless your life. That is a trick. It is not a treat. We understand that. We understand what Mama said. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. And, <coughs> and we got <coughs> excuse me, we got this great myth out there that says, well, other people fall for this stuff, but I'm too wise, I'm too discerning, I can never be tricked. Well, that's not always true of all of us, is it? Some examples maybe. Mary's mother has four children, April, May, June, and Mary. 
Read that. Mary's mother has four children. April, May, June, and the fourth one's got to be Mary. How many of each kind of animal did Moses bring on the ark? Two or three? Huh? Zero. Noah brought them on the ark. How can you lift an, an elephant with one hand? How can you lift an elephant with one hand? You can't. Why? Elephants don't have one hand. If you don't like these, see Jody. She's my supplier. There was an airplane crash. Every single person on board died. But two people survived. How's this possible? That's right. Two people were not single. They were married. Who's bigger? Mr. Bigger? Mrs. Bigger? Or their baby? Mr. Bigger, Mrs. Bigger, or the baby? The baby's what? Little bigger. So... Jody is right there. She's leaving quickly. You'll love this. What do you call an Arabian milkman? What do you call an Arabian milkman? A milkshake. Eli, turn the sound on. They can't hear me. What did the banana say to the mouse? What did the banana say to the mouse? Nothing. Bananas can't talk. All right, now you're smart and you'll know this. You throw away the outside, you cook the inside, then you eat the outside and throw away the inside. What did you eat? Think about it. You throw away the outside, cook the inside, then you eat the outside, throw away the inside. What did you eat? Y'all love these. Corn. Ear of corn. Right? Which month has 28 days? Every one of them. All right. People always trying to trick us, silly word things, trick us to get our money in our Bible. You ever thought about how many tricks are in this book? How many folks are trying to trick other folks? All started in, in the garden, right? You remember the devil wore his snake costume and tricked Eve. Who talks to a snake? Who talks to a talking snake? Eve. By the way... Some people still talk to snakes. We need to be careful. Remember Jacob wore his Esau costume, dressed up like his brother, tricked his father Isaac. You remember Leah wore her Rachel costume and tricked Jacob into marriage. You know, we're always upset at, at the dad there for tricking, but you know the daughter, perhaps even both daughters, also had something to do with that trickery that went on. You remember Jesus talked about these Pharisees, the costumes they wore. They wore a mask. He called them hypocrites. Hypocrite literally means one who wears a mask. And they wore bunches of them. They were never really who they pretended to be. You remember Judas wore a, a friend costume. And we probably all got friends like that. Friends like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kiss you, Jesus. I'm going to give you a, 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 an affectionate hug. And that's a sign to capture him. Ananias and Sapphira, you remember, they wore their Christian costumes. They, they got all dressed up like they were generous people and they were deceptive people wanting folks to praise them. So what's going on now with us and Satan and Satan with all humanity? It seems to me a big key to understanding that is to think about what Jesus said about him in Matthew 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, 41 talks to us about this place of everlasting fire. And it tells us there, Jesus says to us that this is a place prepared for the devil and his angels. Great, great news for us, really bad news for Satan. There's a place being prepared for him that is hell. That place is not prepared for us. But we understand from even the promises of the book of Genesis going through the promises of the book of Revelation that that's where the devil's going to be. I mean, that, that address is going to be his forever. And so, and so we need to understand he wants as many of us as possible to come and to be with him forever and ever in that place. There is no trick 
so dirty that he says, no, nah, I won't go that far to get them. He'll do anything. He'll do everything possible to, to get us into that place. And for us to go with him, isn't there some trick we have to fall for? Isn't there some lie that we have to believe is actually true? And we understand that, that most lies don't sound like lies. Do they? Most lies sound like the truth. That's why so many people believe lies. And you understand also that if we repeat a lie frequently enough, or if anybody repeats a lie enough times, it starts to sound a whole lot like the truth. His assistants, the devils, he, he's got them. Just like a ma magician has people to, to help him or her trick us. He's got, he's got brilliant sounding university professors on his payroll in a sense to trick us into believing that all of this came from nothing. That, that, that somehow over a process of time we, we evolved from fish. And if we evolved from fish, why do we still have fish? I don't know. And the brilliant people don't know. It's, it's a trick. He's got the media trying to trick us that it doesn't matter. Man wants to marry a man, go for it. Woman wants to marry a woman, go for it. You want to abort your child because it's difficult, because it's inconvenient, because it's whatever? Do that. That's, that's a trick. And he's got tons of them. Tons of them. And we understand that all these tricks have got to be rejected. I was, I was doing some reading in my Bible, just, just looking for this phrase about don't be tricked, don't be deceived, and, and there are just so many passages in our Bible that, that emphasize to us, do not be deceived, do not be deceived, do not be... There's one section of Scripture where Paul repeats it three times very quickly. Why would he do that? Because we are, in fact, so frequently deceived, deceived, deceived. It's not always the other person. Sometimes Every sin we've ever committed, again, was because we fell for some type of deception. And Romans 3.23 says, we've all done that. We've all sinned. He's made fools of everybody. And that's why there's so many admonitions in our Bible. Do not be deceived. Don't be tricked. Don't be fooled by this character. In Luke chapter 21, verse 8, we're admonished to not be fooled by counterfeits. This is what Jesus said. And he said, take heed that you not be deceived for many will come in my name saying I am he the time is drawn near therefore do not go after them why would he say don't go after them because some are going after them wolves dress up like sheep if a wolf looked like a wolf we'd all run from it but the devil he's pretty clever in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 there's apparently some deception in people's minds about who will go to that place of eternal fire with, with Satan. And so it's an interesting section of Scripture. I'll just share verse 9 with you. It says, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he says this, Do not be deceived. Don't be tricked by this. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, and go on to say, will not go to that place. And again, Satan has a lot of assistance trying to trick us into being more open-minded, more accepting, more tolerant. But we got to understand the reality is, even if I am more accepting, it doesn't mean God is. Even if I am more tolerant, it doesn't mean God is. Even if I am more open-minded and say, well, it's not really so bad, it doesn't mean that God agrees with me. My task is to agree with God. God's job is not to agree with me or to agree with you. God has said it. He's legislated it. Hopefully, you and I will agree with God. Hopefully, we will follow God more than we follow the, the tempter's assistance but if we don't right and wrong is not determined by cnn msn or even fox or any of these 
It's not determined by somebody in Hollywood. It's determined by somebody in heaven. And He's told us. There's no mystery about this. He's told us what's right. He's told us what's wrong. Now, does that mean that we should be abrasive? Does that mean we should be harsh? Does that mean we should be judgmental? Does that mean we should be unkind? No, 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 no. I, <clears throat> I was talking to somebody recently who I'm convinced that somebody in their family is, is going to have a difficult time coming to Christ, coming to His wonderful news, His saving gospel, His, his amazing grace. They're going to have a difficult time coming to Jesus and His truth and everlasting salvation because a member of the church was especially abrasive towards them, really harsh towards them. That's never been our assignment from God. Ephesians, remember, Paul tells the church, 4.15, speak the truth in love. Don't just speak the truth, speak the truth in love. If we can't speak it in truth, we should not be speaking it. That's, that's the directive from the Father. Also, 1 Corinthians, Paul says that we're not to be deceived about the, uh, the impact that people can have on us. Be not deceived, he says, evil communications or evil company depending on your translation corrupt good habits or corrupt good morals you've seen this in your own life right if you're around somebody that's just got a rotten attitude all the time what does that do for your attitude if you're around somebody that's got a, a vocabulary that's not so holy what does that do for your vocabulary at least your thought process you may think the word you may not say the word hopefully but you know, if we if we run with with folks that are involved in dirty living, and we're not and we're not moving them towards clean living, then in all probability they're moving us more towards dirty living. And and again, what did Paul say? Don't be tricked. Don't be deceived. Don't think that well, I'm strong. I can run with this fellow. I can go to this party. I can watch this movie. I can visit this website. I can be with these people, and I'll be all right. That's what Peter said. Peter, you remember we, we touched on that this morning? He said, I will never deny you. Literally within a few hours, three times he denied Jesus. This is Peter. Peter is probably stronger than just about anybody that's ever lived. What, so what made him so weak in that moment? The people he was with, warming by the devil's fire. I'm sure he when he when he said to Jesus, I'll never I'll die with you, I'll never deny you. I'm sure he believed that. I'm sure he thought that. Again, he was deceived about his own strength. We're not strong enough to spend significant time with people that don't love God, that don't have our values, God's values, that don't respect his word. There are pews that were empty this morning and are empty tonight that used to be filled with good people. What happened? What happened? Most of the time, what happened is those folks and their children started spending more time with, with people who just had another path they're walking, a path not leading towards heaven. And that path is broad and wide. Remember Jesus said, and many there be which go in there at. The narrow path is the path for us. It's the path that we're trying to walk. We're trying to get our children to walk. Let's not be deceived of the impact that, that some ungodly people can have in our lives and in the lives of our children. Um, he Again, there, there are many other examples in our Bible of, of the danger of being deceived. Uh, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 we're, we're taught there, do not be deceived, don't be tricked about this. God's not mocked or God's not tricked. For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. If we plant watermelon seed, we're going to get watermelon. We get enough water, we're going to get some watermelon. We, if we plant apple seeds, we're going to get an apple tree. If we plant good things, we're going to get good things. If we, we plant bad things, we're going to get bad things. If we're ugly to people, people are going to be ugly to us, usually. If we're kind to people, usually, there are exceptions, but usually people will be kind to us. If we live a good life, 
God's going to bless us. We plant good, we'll reap good. Some people, not in here of course, but some people uh, sow or plant these wild oats and they pray for a crop failure. That crop always comes in. Always has, always will. Ephesians 6.15, read that, study that section of Scripture. talks about this great armor that we've been given. We, we have a defense. We've been clothed by Christ with, with something that will, that will repel Satan, will, will help us to be too wise for, for these tricks. And, and we understand that, that the entire body is covered with this armor. When you read Ephesians 6, you see that, except for the backside. That's the only place. Right? Which tells us that as an army, we're to be advancing. We're to be moving forward. We move forward together. We have strength in number. You know, if one of us kind of gets away from, from the flock, we, we're more vulnerable. And then if the devil's trying to trick us, we don't have that reinforcement saying, no, you don't need to go that. that that's, not, that's not as it really appears to be. That's, that's going to get you in trouble. That's going to cost. You remember, remember David? He's up walking on... On this rooftop, his army's at war. That's where the king was supposed to be. But he was in a place he did not need to be. And he was by himself. And he sees this woman. And, and she's not wearing any clothes. And he looks at her. And he doesn't have a buddy up there with him. Or a lot of people, they, David, don't look. Don't call her. She's married. Stay away from her. You'll get in trouble. I'm the king. I'm David. Do whatever I want. I get away with it. He's deceived. That's a man after God's own heart. After your eyes own why. Broke four of ten commands in pursuit of her and covering up the crimes with her. Solomon. David's son. Got to learn from dad. All right, my dad did this with a woman. Got himself in all kind of trouble. One of my little baby brothers or sisters passed away because of this transgression. I'm going to learn better. I'm smarter than dad. I'm the wisest man of all time. We studied this a little bit in our class Wednesday night in the hallway over here. He married 700 women. Had 300 concubines. He wrote much more wisely than he lived. He thought he was invincible. I can have allegiances partnerships with all these women and they worship these idols and I'll never be touched by that and he was touched by that and if that can happen to folks like Peter if that can happen to folks like King David if it can happen to folks like Solomon let's not be deceived it can happen to everybody so let's be aware and let's be with with good people let's wear the Let's wear the armor and let's, let's help each other to be wise, to not be so easily tricked. Trick or treat. God has great treats for us. You, you heard the reading from Christian just a few moments ago from John 14, 1 to 6. That's heaven. That's a, a prepared place for we prepared people by Jesus. He's, he's doing this. And we get to go. That's the greatest of all treats. It's the greatest of all prizes. Not so much the place, but the people in the place. The Father in the place. The Son in the place. The Holy Spirit in the place. You in the place. Me in the place. We in the place. The only way we avoid the place is if we fall for a trick. Choose the treat. Never the trick. We close with this now. This is Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. And, and, and bless their hearts. Moses is directing this to people Joshua been directing this kind of teaching to people also that, that were so easily deceived so easily fooled and so this is Deuteronomy 30 beginning at 15 this is the voice of God now speaking through these good men see I've set before you today and even though this is Deuteronomy move it forward to the 2016 the right here the right now and understand we also have this option set before us I've set before you today life and death, good and evil, or death and evil. And then he says this, In that I command you today, love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways, to keep His commandments, His statutes, His judgments, that you may live and multiply 
And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Notice he's directing us to walk in the path of God. Not in, in the path of a politician that's popular. Not in the path of a Facebook buddy. Not in the path of the latest movie. Not in the path of this very popular novel. Not in the path of the majority. It is always exclusively in the path of God. The word of God is our governor is our determiner of our path nothing more nothing less nothing else anything outside of this is not good look at verse 18 now 17 then 18 but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. And they did that. These are the kinds of people. They took gold from around their necks, gave it to Aaron. He made a cow and they suddenly said, you're our God. They're pretty easily tricked. Pretty easily deceived. And later they have a history of just taking things, making, the, making it out of their hands and bowing down to it. People are pretty, pretty gullible. This is 18. I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you. I have set before you. Here's the choice. I have set before you life and death. In other words, treat or trick. Blessing and cursing. Treat or trick. Therefore, choose life. Choose the treat. Choose the blessing. Choose the reward. That both you and your descendants may live. That we're choosing for our children also. And our grandchildren. It's important what we do. There are consequences for others. If we're good people who worship. In all probability our children will be the same. If we're not. You know. Verse 20. That you may love the Lord your God. That you may obey his voice. And that you may cling to him. For he is your life. Don't you love that phrase? He's your life. And the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. Choose blessing or cursing, choose life or death, choose trick or treat. We choose the treat. We choose God. Would you bow with me, please? Thank you, Father, for allowing us to study tonight. Great passages will strengthen us, which will keep us from, by, from being naive and gullible.